I'd like to let you know that Be a Game Changer um, is trending second in the UK at the moment behind Ask Jake, which is Jake Quickenden, who apparently, because Jackie's just told me, was in X Factor, was he? Yeah, we think so. I don't know, something like that. Anyway, he's doing a whole question-answer session. He's trending first. And I absolutely get what Lizzie Yarnold said about social media isn't the real world, but I do think that we can generate an awful lot of conversation through it. And a lot of television programmes are taking real awareness of how much social media activity um, they are generating. And the same is true of newspapers. If articles get retweeted, it really can have an impact, which means every single one of us in the room has the power to make a difference. And I think that's quite exciting because everybody in this room wants to achieve the same thing. And this morning when I tweeted that I was giving the, the keynote speech tonight, um, I got an interesting reaction. And the amazing thing is about Twitter, you can retweet certain things. So I thought, well, I'll retweet one extreme and the other. And one extreme was Dr. Victor Victoria Sims, who's a developmental and cognitive psychologist. I think we need to get her in the room next year. She said, fed up with a quarter page in the papers, if she's lucky, on women's sport. I'm a female, love sport, watching and doing. Come on, guys. On the other side of the coin was Mark, a Leicester City fan. Um, <laughs> I, I, that is no reflection on Leicester City, I'm just telling you because that's what it says on his profile. Who, poor man, I retweeted his comment, which was, <laughs> the facts are, whether you like it or not, it's that most people aren't interested, with a few exceptions in women's sport, hashtag fact. <laughs> to which he then complained two hours later when he got to his dinner, he said, just having dinner, sat down, looked at my Twitter feed, the feminazis are after me. <laughs> Here's my advice, don't tweet Claire Balding about women's sports. <laughs> um, many of them did point out to him that it wasn't fact, or even hashtag fact, it was his opinion. Now, the, the, the sad state of affairs is it is the opinion of an awful lot of newspaper editors. It is still the opinion of a lot of people who decide what gets into the news bulletins, not just the coverage of sport, which is, I think, an awful lot better than it was even, even five years ago, certainly on the BBC, on Sky, and with BT Sport coming into the party, I think they've put a lot of pressure on Sky. I, think, I still think there's work to be done on ITV, and I think there's work to be done on Channel 4 as well, but it is improving. The general um, consensus is, though, the opinion tends to be women aren't interested in women's sport and men aren't interested in women's sport. Now, I think it's our job to change that opinion, but it's also our job, and Helena touched on it, when you invest in sport, whether you invest in it as a media partner or a sponsor or a presenter or a reporter, or an athlete, actually, I think it is part of your job to be creative with it. I think you've got to turn up to the party with more than a bottle of wine. Bottle of wine helps, always, but more than that as well. And the, the more than a bottle of wine, is, is the activity in your brain and your energy and what you can bring to it. Now, we are helped hugely as, as media people by athletes being um, helpful. And, and I'm looking at Lizzie because Lizzie was fantastic at the Winter Olympics. And it's always difficult for athletes when they're in an Olympic bubble or, an, or a Winter Olympic bubble and what they're allowed to do and when they're allowed to do it. Well, she was still standing there at one o'clock in the morning after she'd won her gold medal doing every interview because she knew that it mattered. This was her chance to get this story out there. And Lizzie's not an egotistical person. So this wasn't for her and her glory. She knew that she could be the person that made a difference to some girl watching breakfast news the next morning who saw a woman sliding on her tummy down an ice track <laughs> at god knows how many miles an hour and winning a winter olympic gold medal she would make that difference and i think every athlete in this room is aware of that and it's quite a burden actually it can be a burden to bear i don't think that many men feel it some do some are very aware of it but I would love to reach the stage where, yes, you can enjoy your sport, you can do what you do. The Jones is here. The Jones is the coolest woman on the planet, <laughs> and certainly on the mountain. And, 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 I mean, God, talk about making winter sports super cool, because I do think the snowboarders have this wonderful way of almost pretending it doesn't matter. And they're so friendly with each other. I'm like, you must hate her. She's like, no, such a good ride. It was so cool. And they bring something different. I really do believe that. They bring something so fresh to it. Because we are brought up in, an, in a slightly alpha male world where we have to hate our opposition. And I think there is room for everything, actually. I think there's such a, a broad spectrum of sport and there's so much joy. And I love covering it. I get so excited. You know that I do. Um, 
because I really enjoy uh, partly getting you guys to say what your, you know, the training that's gone into it, the, the amount that it's taken you to get where you want to get, but also then your joy of doing it. My job is to make you look good. It's not it really genuine. It's taken me 20 years to realise, and I realised in London 2012, it's not about me. It's about you. <laughs> now I finally realise that. I think I might be getting somewhere as a broadcaster. Um, Andrew Hart, who, who came to me on Twitter this morning, is a little bit more co coherent than, than poor Mark, um, the Leicester City fan. Anyway, um, he used the word reality, and he used it a lot. He talked about commercial reality. He talked about um, capacity constraint. He was talking about the press. Um, budget focused. He said media is about popularism and profits. When the general public has a greater interest in women's sport, I'm sure sponsors and press will pay more attention. Well, my message is to you, we can start, we've already started that happening the other way around. I don't think the press, whether it's newspapers or television, um, is, it, or radio, needs to be reactive. I think it can create the conversation. I think it can start the whole thing moving. And that's where I think we all, we all genuinely have a part to play. And I don't want to stand here and give you another speech about, oh, have you looked and seen how little coverage there is? Because actually it is genuinely, it, I do think we should be positive. I think it is getting better, but it can be even better. I think when they write the history of, of women's sport, they will look at this year as the year that it changed. Because this is, an, obviously, it's a non-Olympic year, and it's not a Commonwealth Games year, it's not a Winter Olympics year, and we tend to find in the even years, even numbered years, obviously with, with multiple events that are both genders, you get equal coverage, and therefore women rise to the fore because they tend to do awfully well. It's amazing, that. Um, <laughs> incredible, and they've got so many other things to do. Anyway, um, they do very, very well, but in an, in an odd year, it can be hard. It can be very hard for women's sports, and that's why you, you tend to find come the end of the year and you get to the awards, and quite often women are overlooked because they haven't had the attention on the way through. This year, I think, will be the one that changes it because we've got the Women's World Cup in Canada this summer, which we covered brilliantly on the BBC, 22 matches is live across BBC Two and BBC Three, presented by the fantastic Jackie Oatley, who was there. Um, but also, we've got the Women's Ashes, which is going to be huge. And I interviewed the whole of the England women's cricket team earlier this year for, for Waitrose Weekend. And Waitrose have been a big supporter of theirs, but I do think Kia, and they were mentioned in that sponsorship programme, they deserve a big shout-out as well. They're the first company ever to sponsor the England women's cricket side just on their own, not as a joint deal. We want the women, and that's who we're going to target, because, funnily enough, they realise that women buy cars as well. It's extraordinary. <laughs> One day they'll think we can park. But anyway, um, <laughs> or, or design cars that do it for us, which is even better, even better. Um, anyway, the England women's cricket team are, are a massive story, and you saw Kate Cross took eight wickets on, on Sunday in, in a men's match. Now, I didn't know until I interviewed, and this is my ignorance, but I, I hope because I didn't know it, some of you wouldn't have known it either. I didn't know there is nothing in the rule book to say that a woman can't play for England. Um, no, exactly. Um, and, and all the way through the counties, you could play for a county side if you're good enough. So there has never been cricket where you think, OK, well you look back to Rachel's battle to be um, elected onto the MCC and you think, mm, that must be the funniest, studiest sport in the world. Actually, it's not. There are many others that are. But it's not. Cricket is, is very open-minded and women's cricket is, I think, making massively... Um, fast strides and the, the interesting thing about the England women's cricket team is because Charlotte's been such a successful captain and been captain for such a long time when you ask the rest of the team who was your role model which Alice asked the panel earlier they say Charlotte Edwards <laughs> and they and you know now we're in the dressing room with her and we're walking out with her she's been extraordinary she is extraordinary she deserves every accolade coming hasn't had nearly enough attention in my opinion we can make that change which will she'll hate but anyway we can make that change um, I, I think that the, the thing about reality and people saying hashtag fact and hashtag reality, oh, take a reality check, reality changes. A hundred years ago, the suffragettes were fighting for the right to, fo to, to vote. A hundred years ago, most women were not allowed into higher education. Actually, an awful lot of women didn't get an education at all. Reality changes and we can change it. Investment banks didn't use to target women at all because in their eyes women didn't earn any money so therefore they didn't need to invest it. Name me an investment bank now that doesn't have a wing specially dedicated to targeting female clients. They get it, it changes. The same with car manufacturers, the same with everyday banks, the same with sports clothing companies who have moved beyond shrink it and pink it and now actually do have an effective women's line that you might want to wear. Um, 
technology companies and Microsoft in the room, and you understand this completely, there would have been a time where you didn't necessarily factor in a female audience and a female clientele. You now absolutely do because you know you have to. It, it's not just that it's, it's numbers, it's also brain power and it's also what women want to do and how they want to work. More and more women, and actually technology has enabled this, are able to work part-time, are able to work on the move, are able to work from home. This changes the world and it changes the world for men as well. And I don't know whether anybody saw the brilliant documentary on Hillary Clinton, which went back to the speech she made in China, where she talked about women's rights are human rights. Women, and every, everything she said she finished with, women's rights are human rights. Because this changes the landscape for all of us. It makes us much more productive. And I've always believed that seeing women being active, seeing women allowed to be competitive and ambitious and muscular and strong, seeing women working together as a team, seeing women not worry about their hair or the makeup and not wearing high heels, actually that's quite a rare image in our world. And the Women's Equality Party is taking that onto a political level and will launch, I think, on Monday. But that's their message. We want to see women on an equal playing field. It's not about, I mean, much as I think Helen has done a great job with, with the 30% club, 30% is not enough. I'm impatient. We're impatient. We want to have a stronger representation. And we want to actually be allowed to be everything we're capable of being. And that is for the kids who are four and five years old now. And that's for boys as well. That's for everybody being allowed to do what they want to do. Um, I, I do think that there is an, a very, in terms of the commercial reality, I absolutely get it. But I, I do think that, that governing bodies need to be a little bit more aware. And my message to them would be wake up a little bit. Just wake up, be a bit more organised, make sure the information is out there. Because if you have an event that there is not a big crowd at, believe me, Barbara, brilliant as she is, is not going to want to televise it. Because if there's not a crowd there, it doesn't feel as if there's an atmosphere. It doesn't feel as if it's important. Now, I'm not just putting that rule over women's events, because, my God, if you watched um, England against the West Indies in Antigua, there was nobody there, and it still gets massive coverage, and it still gets massive um, sponsorship, and it still gets four pages in the paper. And it can also happen. I used to present rugby league and, and, and love doing so, that Challenge Cup was always a challenge for, for crowds because it wasn't included in, the, included in their uh, season tickets, so they didn't go. Until they got to the final at Wembley, why would they bother with a quarterfinal or semi-final, especially when they could watch it live on the BBC in the pub or at home, um, in that order. But anyway, um, crowds are, are something I think that sport can, governing bodies can actually solve that problem themselves. And I don't care if you give the tickets away, I really don't. You shouldn't have to but I don't care if that happens. Price them reasonably, get the message out there. It's why England Germany was, was such a big success. Everybody knew about it. But I try and find three women's events every week when I write in Waitrose Weekend. I try and find a women's sport to put in my three to follow. It's really difficult to do because the information needs to be better and that has to come from the governing bodies. But I think athletes can help. You know, you get it out there. Make sure it's on a calendar. Connect it to something else. And, it, and social media can definitely, definitely help in, in, that, in that field. Um, the BBC and Channel 4 are the, the two channels with a public service remit. And I think they're the two that one can, one can, obviously I can't because I work for both of them, but one can continue to put pressure on to say, look, this is what we want to see. And that is, again, the job of all of us. Make sure if you do hear a sports bulletin or five sports bulletins through the afternoon, and Five Live have done a brilliant job. I talked to Ellie Older, who's a great, great friend of mine. And when I joined the BBC as a trainee, there were only... Um, Charlotte Nicholl, Ellie Oldroyd on the radio, that was it in terms of female voices on sport and on telly. Sue Barker had just moved from Sky, Hazel Irvin was just coming out from BBC Scotland and the late great Helen Rollison who was the first woman to present Grandstand. They were the, the only women around who were doing what I wanted to do. So that classic thing of who are you looking at, where, you know, as Billie Jean King says, if you can't see it, you can't be it. There were very, very few women. Now, completely different story, thank God and masses of opportunities as well, but more women proving that they can. And the next big breakthrough, well, it's happening already because Caroline Barker's in the room, Jackie's in the room, female commentary, and I think women commentating and women having the range in their voice and the confidence to do it and being backed by a media organisation who, who are going to make sure that they feel supported and they've got the, a length of time to get better and better at what they're doing. That will make a, a big, big difference. But the world changes really fast. And there are so many outlets now, and the investment that, that BT Sport is putting into 
um, televised sport is, is not just about what you see on your big screen at home, it's about what you can see on your phone and what you can see on the move. And then it becomes even more personalised and it becomes even more direct and it becomes about what you want to watch and when you want to watch it and what you demand. So again, I say to you, we have a role to play. We have a chance to make our voices heard because our voices are being heard uh, as never, never before. But it can change within half a generation. It can change within a year or two. And I firmly believe that, that by the next Olympics and beyond the next Olympics in Rio, we will have a very, very firm footing and we will have a much higher profile for, for key sports, key women's sports. But as well as the, the Ashes this summer and the World Cup this summer, there's also the World Cup in netball. And I, I think netball is really powerful. And I, I played very badly at primary school, really badly. And apparently I played when I went on to boarding school, but I don't remember it because I had this big conversation with Miranda Hart, who was at school with me the other day, because we're trying to go, I'm trying to do a big thing in netball, by the way. I mean, high profile, not, not, not commercially viable or anything, although, oh no, why? Oh. Anyway, <laughs> come talk to me later. But it, it, it would be quite a big deal. It would be connected with Sport Relief, which is, which is next, next year. And I want it to be about netball. And I went into the meeting about it. And of course, they try and start talking me into making it football. And I said, no, I don't want football. I want it to be netball. Because girls, every single girl in this country, wherever they went to school, they will have played netball. And they very rarely get to see that. Brilliant as Sky's coverage is, and I watched, I watched the final of the Super League finals, fantastic. Brilliant as that is, they very rarely get to see netball being lauded as something that's cool and groovy. And, you know, look at all these people who can play netball. So we're trying to make that happen. Anyway, can't remember what the point was about netball, but <laughs> if you do want to talk about it later, you can. I, again, I think creative ideas, how can you make it look different? How can you get it to an audience that hasn't seen it? And how can you make people want to do it? Because when they want to do it, they care. When they know more about the competitors, they care even more. And then the conversation starts because, frankly, we all love sport, right? But you go to a non-sports fan and try and explain why kicking a ball in a field or running around in circles or my horse is faster than your horse or I can slide on my tummy down, a, down an ice track. You try and explain to someone who doesn't like sport why that is important and they just look at you like you're bonkers. It is important because we care. We care who wins and that's where our job is to make the information train even stronger. Keep that information coming, know more about the competitors, care about Maggie switching you know, switching codes from rugby to shot put, isn't it? Yes, I know, I'm going to get you on my show. Um, <laughs> it's an extraordinary story. She's an amazing person. I had um, on the show last week, we had an all-female lineup. Um, Martina Navratilova, obviously, <laughs> you know, legend. Um, Judy Murray, legend. And, and two women footballers who are brilliant and have been named in the England women's squad to go to Canada, Tony Duggan and Enia Luko. They were fantastic, and they've hardly had any big profile coverage at all. Obviously, they have within the, the football networks, but outside that, first big appearance for, for the two of them. They were absolutely sensational, and the feedback after that programme was the strongest we've had of the run so far, and we've just done show 7 of 12. That was the strongest one. And the way Martina engaged with them, and Judy engaged with them, and wanted to know, and, and Martina's reaction, when, when she watched their goals, their sort of big star goals, she goes, oh, wow, it's like Maradona. And it was, <laughs> except there was nobody in the stadium. And that's when I said to them, this is such, a, it is a shame, but it's not, it shouldn't be a shame. We can change this. Nobody's watching. We need to get people there, people watching. The talent is getting stronger and stronger. The actual setup, the infrastructure is getting better and better. The media coverage is in place. People, we need to get people into those stands. And that's why I mentioned the netball in the beginning, because the copper box, <laughs> packed, absolutely packed, brilliant atmosphere, sounded great, looked great, good story as well. And it was just sensational to watch, and, and Caroline was commentating, so that was even better. So, get creative, see the opportunities, that, that is there if you're sponsors, if you're media, if you're, if you're competitors as well. And if your bank doesn't sponsor women's sport, but it does sponsor men's sport, write them a letter and say, oh, I'm terribly sorry, um, Barclays, you're very good, but I noticed that you sponsor the Premier League and you sponsor the men's golf in, in America and you sponsor um, the, the tennis finals, um, but you don't sponsor women's sport, why? because I'm thinking of moving to a bank that does. <laughs> See how that goes down, because I think Barclays actually will be the next big ones to get involved, because I had, I had a chat with them yesterday. <laughs> um, <laughs> if I can. Um, 
It's the same with energy suppliers. It's the same with car manufacturers. It's the same with your own employer. Go to your employer, ask the question, because we're awfully good at being quiet about these things and suffering like wonderful martyrs. Yes, yes, it's terrible, but I won't say anything. I won't say anything. Well, I decided a couple of years ago that I would I just would start saying things and doing things and as I said last year stirring up a little trouble which has got you know it, it can sometimes get you into trouble but luckily I have bosses who, who understand me very well now so when the decision came up about um, the Grand National which which I've worked on not not presented for this one but I've worked on for 21 years um, when the decision came up whether to do entry or, or whether to do the boat races I actually made up my mind over a year ago and I decided um, when I was out in Sochi at the Winter Olympics and I said to, to Philip Burney, who, who with, with Barbara is my BBC boss, um, I said, don't book anybody else for, for the boat races. He said, really? He said, but it's Grand National Day. I said, I know, don't book anybody else. And he said, well, but we can't fly you in. I said, I know, I know. Just, just I, need to make, I need to think this through and I just need to do a little bit more work in my head, but essentially I, I want to be there. And he said, do you? I said, yeah, it's the first ever women's boat race. That's never going to happen again. I want to present that. He said, yeah, but what if... You know, at that stage, we didn't know AP McCoy was retiring, so we didn't know it was going to be his final Grand National. And also at that stage, I didn't know Nina Carberry was going to have a very good ride and might become the first woman to win the Grand National. So believe me, that weekend was pretty bloody awful. But <laughs> until my mother texted me with the one, two, three of the Grand National, then I was fine, by which time we were already on air. But I never... I never doubted that I was doing the right thing. I just, in that moment, that last sort of particularly 48 hours and when my parents weren't really talking to me, um, <laughs> I, I had, you know, I was conflicted and in my head I was just thinking, God, I hope I've done the right thing. And then I knew I had, partly because every time I went out walking the dog, people would stop me, women would stop me who were running or walking to say, I'm really pleased you're doing the boat race, by the way. I'm really pleased you're doing the women's boat race. I'm really pleased, you know, all along and ever since, apart from the odd person who said, I can't believe you gave up entry, apart from that odd person, but even I've sat on a table with the winning trainer and the winning owner from the Grand National and they get it. So it's really fine. As I keep telling my mother, it's fine. Um, but it, is, it was the right thing to do because it was just me going, do you know what? I support women's sport and why don't I do something? So here is my challenge to you tonight, and you've got your pledge cards in front of you. It's your chance just to do that, and you don't have to treat, choose between Aintree and the boat races, you don't. But there will be choices you will have to make, there will be things that, that you, would have, you, you are hesitant to do. Do them, be brave, because Madeleine Albright talked to, about a special place in hell reserved for women who don't help other women. I think there's a special place in heaven um, reserved for women who do help other women and men who help women and it's a rocking good party <laughs> and even if you don't believe in heaven and hell we can make that happen here on earth so be bold be brave do something creative do something proactive and know that you will be thanked for the rest of your life by random strangers who will just say you made a difference so make a difference it makes you feel good believe me thank you <laughs>